Howdy y'all and welcome back. Mechanical offset and zero. So by this point in your new gun owner journey, you've probably come across the term zero. All right, and just roughly, that is the point at which your sights and your bullet will line up and meet out in front of you. And it also has to do with your windage. For the sake of this discussion, we're gonna assume that the windage has been set from the factory and is correct, meaning my left and right where I'm hitting, if I'm not hitting dead center, that's on me, right? Because the, the, the gun is preset from the factory with correct windage. All right, so before we get into zero, we have to understand mechanical offset. And mechanical offset is the difference between the top of my sights, this line right here, and the bore axis, the middle of my barrel where the bullet is coming out. And as you can see, this is higher than this. So when we talk about shooting low with a handgun, we talked about maybe milking the trigger where we're squeezing with these two fingers a little bit as we press or just flinching a little bit as we press recoil anticipation. Those are gonna be generally more dramatically low than your mechanical offset. And really, you're really mostly gonna notice mechanical offset if you're shooting extremely up close like three yards or two yards or something. But it gets more complicated than that. <laughs> so <laughs> when we talk about our sight picture, I'm assuming by this point you've got a pretty like firm grasp of what iron sight pistol sights should look like in a sight picture like this. Right. So we have three planes. We have the rear sight, the front sight, and the target. We want to focus our eyes on the front sight and we want to have the front sight centered in the notch right here with an equal amount of daylight on each side and the top of this lined up with the top of that, right? That is our iron sight sight picture. So assuming we're doing all of that correctly and we get a perfect trigger pull with no recoil anticipation, we are still going to have this mechanical offset situation going on. Now, your sight picture is a straight line, but when the bullet comes out of the barrel, it is affected by gravity, and so it will start traveling downwards. So, the way we rectify this is with our zero. We're actually, it's like launching artillery, right? With you think of artillery shells, we lob them through the air. You're doing the same thing with bullets, but on a much like a tiny fractional sort of scale. So what we do is we've got a slightly elevated rear sight, right? And when I line these up, I'm actually tipping the bore axis of the gun and I'm exaggerating this a little for visual effect upwards so that this line and this line will intersect at some point out, well, out there. That's your zero. Here's where it gets fun. Almost every manufacturer, and sometimes even different models from the same manufacturer, will have a different zero distance. And then it gets even more fun. So, okay, let's take a look at our zero distance right here at least the concept, right? Okay. Then, <laughs> sight hold. So different manufacturers use different sight holds when they set up their guns. So what is sight hold? Well, it looks like this. So you sometimes you're overlaying the very middle of the front sight directly over the bullseye. Sometimes it's a half and half, meaning the Front sight wants to kind of obscure the bullseye halfway. Sometimes it's all the way underneath in a six o'clock or lollipop hold. Clear as mud? All right. So, so best thing you can do if you're brand new to all this and you've gone out and purchased your first gun is do some Google foo. Get online, look through some old forum posts, 
or maybe from the manufacturer's literature and find out which hold you want to use with your gun and what the zero distance is set for. It's going to be subtle as far as your mechanical offset with a handgun. So something like we talked about our recoil, we're aiming dead, dead center zero and we're flinching and we're hitting down here, right? Or maybe a little milking and it's putting you maybe straight down, but kind of here. Mechanical offset with a handgun, if your zero is set at 10 yards, but you've got your target at three, you're aiming dead center, you're hitting like there. Like it's very nominal because this distance and this distance aren't that far apart. Where a mechanical offset gets funky is something like this setup. <laughs> I have three and three quarter inches difference between the barrel line where the bullet comes out and the center of my optic right here. So that is a large amount of mechanical offset. So this is zeroed at 50 yards. It's what's known as a 50 slash 200 yard zero. So anything short of 50 yards my bullets are going to hit low. And if I'm shooting at something extremely close, like three yards, I have about three and a half inches of mechanical offset, meaning I was aiming here, I'm hitting down here, or you know something to that effect, right? And then the closer to 50 I get, that distance starts shrinking, and at 50 yards, I'm hitting bullseye. Then the bullet continues arcing upward, and then starts being affected by gravity, it's coming back down, it crosses the bullseye again at 200 yards. So that all looks like this. So hunters often use a 100 yard zero for a combat style weapon like this, 50, 200. Some people set these up at 100. I've even heard of people doing like 200 yard zeros. I don't know what that's all about, that's weird, but whatever, 50, 200 is the one you're mostly going to come across, 36 yard zero, is very similar. Uh, it's it's a little bit flatter trajectory, and so 36 yard zero got popular towards the tail end of the global war on terror. You do you, figure out, do your homework, see what works best for you. I like 5200 because it's just pretty easy. All right, so mechanical offset and zero. So if you're setting up a handgun with a red dot, what distance should you zero your handgun? Again, everybody has opinions. I like 15 yards. For me, with a handgun, if I'm inside of 15 yards, so keep in mind you've got your, your optic up here, right? So you're gonna have even more mechanical offset. But if we think about self-defense, right? So if I'm aiming here on a threat and I hit here, that's fine. If I'm trying to take a headshot and I'm aiming, say, here, but I hit here, also fine, right? You're going to impact lower as long as it's inside of your zero. So if you zero for 15, you're going to be dead on at 15. At 20, you're going to hit just a little bit high, not a big deal. If it's in closer, you're a little bit low, not a big deal. But much beyond 15 starts becoming a little impractical to me for talking about home defense, self-defense situations. Like it's gonna be hard to justify why you shot somebody that far away in a court of law. Not that you shot them in a court of law. <laughs> It'll be hard to, hard to defend yourself in a court of law as to why you shot them when they were like that far away, right? I mean, the circumstances might justify that, especially if you live in a more rural area. I am in the suburbs. We're all pretty packed in here. And, you know, my property's a quarter of an acre. So, you know, taking a shot much beyond that probably means the person was running away and then I get in trouble. So, anyway, that's all going down a different rabbit hole. But the important concept here is... You need to understand, you need to know, you need to understand mechanical offset and sight picture, sight alignment, but you need to know how your gun is set up. And so you may, you're probably gonna need to do a little bit of homework to find out what are your sights zeroed for. 
and which hold you should be using. You can kind of experiment with this, and we'll get into this more in a future video, but try to avoid, if you are really consistently hitting lower than you think you're aiming, a common thing people want to do is start raising the front sight up. So now you've got this, you've got your rear sights here, and now you're, I'm exaggerating here, but you're bringing that front sight up to compensate. And try not to do that. Try to keep your sight picture consistent all the time. So if you're hitting low, first de debug and make sure you're not milking or flinching. And if you're confident you're not doing either of those two, try just holding your whole sight picture up a little higher. But keep the sights, keep the top of the sights level. You want that consistency, whether you're shooting at three yards or 10 yards or 20 yards. You want to keep top of the iron sights flat to each other. All right, that's all I got for this one. Until next time, be easy, y'all.